So this lawn, as you can see, is looking absolutely brilliant. Probably the best lawn I've ever produced from seed. So it's time to sort out the other side. Stay with me and I'll show you the steps you need to take to take your lawn to the next level. Throughout history, men have always been drawn to grass. Whether it be in the park, a sports ground, or simply in your own garden. There's just something about those quintessential British stripes that makes you want them for yourself. Not to mention getting one over on your neighbours. Follow Daniel on his lawn journeys in his step-by-step -step videos this year whilst you create your own lawn journey, achieving that dream lawn you have always wanted with simple and easy to follow methods. The lawn you have always dreamed of is only a grass seed away. Now sit back and enjoy the video. Oh, and one more thing. If you want to subscribe, you know what to do. All right, so we'll just have a walk over. So, you know, most people would probably be happy with this lawn, but obviously we're not, because we want to elevate it to that next level. So we've got a nice even sward now. Still a bit of uh, disparity there in the colour between the two lawns, but we're going to sort that, don't worry. What I can tell you we do have is because we've not been really looking after this side much, we've got a bit of brown patch. Quite prevalent all over, but we're going to scarify it, thin it out, and then it can breathe a little bit. We'll feed it up, and then that'll disappear. No problem. As you can see over the other side, we've not got any of that problem because it's healthy, fed, and everything like that. So we can just tell that looking after your lawn does prevent disease. So let's just go on to the other side. What you can see is here, that's not magpie damage or anything like that. That's me digging out annual meadow grass. Just had a little bit of a session before I started filming. Been doing this side as I go, but I've only just realized that this side is pretty good. So let's just have a cast our eye back to when we started this project on this side a few weeks back. We'll have a look how the field compost fared over the last few weeks. Right, so it's Monday the 30th of May. Time to take these covers off and let's see the results of the field compost trial. Well, I'm really impressed with it actually. Look how thick it is. And to be honest with you, it is absolutely roasting under there. Yeah, considering uh, just down 10 days, really pleased with that. So, time to get it cut. Probably a little bit longer than I would like, but just other circumstances meant I couldn't get here this weekend to take them off. But it's not too late. So let's get it cut and then we'll see how it looks after. Right, so that's been cut, looks good. Really pleased with the initial results. So I was really impressed with the field compost. The seed took really well and was really consistent all across the lawn, which is good, whereas the compost sometimes leaves gaps everywhere. So the first step we need to do is scarify this lawn. I cut it uh, Monday, today's Wednesday, so it doesn't need cutting yet. And then we'll go over it and cut it after. Got ye old faithful back from the repair shop. Kev sorted me out. Uh, down at Mormend in Bolton for your top quality repairs. So we're good to go and get it looking something like that side. That went pretty well, like a knife through butter, even though I've got blunt blades. Let's just have a quick look at what we've uh, achieved. So one of our aims is to just thin it out a little bit before we put new uh, feed on, because what we're going to do is regenerate new growth. So we need to get rid of as much of the old growth as possible to allow room for the new stuff so it doesn't all get uh, crowded out. And what we really tried to do was cut some of these off, but I've not managed it. So what I'll do now, is we'll just go over it with the rotary quite low and that'll sort all these out because they're stood up and um, people say oh what about the annual meadow grass all the seeds will spread everywhere this is true and this can't be avoided you can't neglect the rest of the lawn just 
not to uh, upset the annual meadow grass. So the good thing, what we're gonna do now is use the rotary mower, very powerful suction. So this is gonna hoover up all those seed heads. Yeah, you might get one or two left behind, but because the lawn's so thick, it's not gonna germinate because it won't be able to. Annual meadow grass needs a lot of open space to kind of germinate. So if it's nice and thick sward, it just get crowded out and uh, won't be able to thrive. So we keep it under control that way as well. So I would normally rake, but today, because it's so hot and I've got a bad back, I'm just gonna get the mower out and be lazy. And to be honest, there's not that much debris on the floor. So getting the hater out will be the easiest way. So let's get on with that. And we'll then do step two. Okay, so out with the hater, what I'll do is, it's on number three at the moment, just because that's my last job. I'm gonna knock it down to two, and then they'll pick up all this debris very nicely. All right, that looks pretty good. So you can see I did two passes there. I did it left to right and it just left a little bit of debris behind only because there was a bit of a hole in my bag and it was blowing out. And in some places there was quite a lot, so it didn't pick up very well. Um, but I also went up and down just to get the mower, uh, to get the lawn used to the mower going up and down as well. Cause sometimes we can get in the habit of just mowing the same way and the grass starts to grow that way. And then when we want to change, we find that we start scalping because it's not used to being cut that way. And then the vibration of the mower starts to move the soil particles underneath. And then we start getting ribbing and we start getting uh, movement. And then that then causes uh, bumps and humps as well. So if we go the other way occasionally, we stop that from happening. Because over the other side, that is, because I can only go up and down really. I can go left to right, but it's not ideal. I am noticing just a little bit of movement. So I need to next year, get on with the top dressing just to smooth out those little um, ribs that are forming but that's just uh, a power for the course unfortunately uh, but that's all right that's no problem so back to over here so what we're going to do now is the next step we're going to get on with the cylinder more and we're going to reduce the height of that grass even more so that we're starting from soil level as much as we can do when we start getting the new growth coming through so time to get the uh, lawnmower out. I'm going to use the sterling. While well, I've got it, I'm going to use it. But Austin, you'll be pleased here. I'm not going to abuse it. So I've got that set to 17 mil. I've just had a little uh, fiddle with it. Just run it up and down. And 17 is taking a nice amount off. So um, let's crack on. All right, so that's finished. Another great job with the sterling. I know what some of you are thinking. Why have you got headphones on? You said you didn't need them by law. Well, you don't, but I've got Talk Sport on. So there you go. All right, so we've uh, really knocked the height down of the lawn now. Notice also that I put my double stripes in so that I can apply my spray tank and my fertilizer very accurately. You might have your own way of doing things. If you do it with a smaller spray, you know, you probably do single stripes. So you do whatever's best for you. Not always what I do is best for you, but I do what's best for me. So next step is let's get some Equinox HD on. So I'm ready to go on with the Equinox HD. I've weighed out what I need. I need four kilos for this particular lawn. So what I'm going to do is when it's hot like this, we really do want to be getting it really accurately. So today, I'm going to be doing my special technique of dropping the rate of application down to a low and doing multiple passes just to ensure we get that application absolutely spot on and then we'll be watering straight away even with the polymer coated fertilizer you still want to be watering in straight away on a hot day like today or a hot week when there's a heat wave due
So the next stage in the process is to get some liquids on. In my tank, I've got some Stella, I've got some Grace, I've got some Sopro, and I've got some wetting agent. All these can be watered in straight away, which is what we're gonna to do today, because we put the granular on, we wanna get that in straight away, and we wanna get the wetting agent in straight away as well. So I've put a bit more water in than normal, so I can get more water on at the start when we're spraying. So let's crack on. So as you can see, I've just sprayed that on there. What we're going to do now is water it in, get all that wetting agent washed in, the Sopra washed in, the Grace washed in, and the Stella washed in. Don't worry about leaving it sat on the leaf on days like this. It'll still get taken up by the roots. We don't want to end up scorching along because we've put a lot of stuff on. So let's get watering straight away, and then we don't end up with any disasters. Okay, so that's everything done today. We've had a good session. So we've scarified, we've cut really short, We've applied a granular fertiliser and we've gone on with a load of liquids even though there's a heat wave as long as we're willing to water and there's no obvious heat stress on the lawn to start with totally fine obviously if you're down south it's 35 40 degrees maybe old off but i'm in bolton it's not that hot so i hope you've enjoyed this one hope to see you next time when we reveal the results of this but until then take care and see you soon